Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. Uh, good morning, friends. There is something about that name, that name that brings us together to worship, no matter whether we're in person or uh, on a snowy Sunday morning. Um, we are blessed to be in the presence of God. Uh, glad to have you here this morning. Good morning, Pam. Um, hopefully everybody got the message that we canceled this morning. I know there's not a lot of snow, two or three inches, depending on where you're at, but the fierce east wind really scared me this morning. It was really blowing and drifting at about 7.30, 8 o'clock, and I just didn't feel that it was worth the risk. And so we can join together uh, online and, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to worship together again next week. So a uh, few people weren't very happy that we weren't worshiping in person, but um, we have to do what's best for the safety of all. And so that's where we are today. Good morning, Connie, good to have you. So I'm gonna take a quick look at our announcements today. First, the big news of the day, Ashton Boudreau lost his first tooth. Now, you might not think that's a big deal, but when you're, what, five years old, that is a big deal. So I'll pull his picture and we'll put it up on the screen for next Sunday, although he won't be with us. Him and Mama are traveling to Florida to, to spend some time with Grandpa down there, but um uh, Ashton is pretty excited today to have lost his first tooth, a big event in a little person's life. Um, also looking at our announcements, and those of you that have email will get the copy of the bulletin in um, a little bit this afternoon when I send out the links for this as well. But uh, Dave and Joyce Evans, don't forget that you're the February greeter, so that will start next week. And then also next week, Kurt and Randy are our sound room people for uh, the month of February. So um, good morning, Kathy. See you popping in there. And um, let's see, next Sunday will also be Holy Communion. And so we'll come together to share in God's goodness and the sacrifice that Jesus made as well. Uh, many people have been asking about the balance on the parking lot. We now have collected well over $38,000. We are well on our way to paying this off by hopefully July, which would be one year instead of the two years that we've uh, co uh, committed to. Um, uh, and so... Um, uh, you'll see in the bulletin when you get it later, a lot of people have asked me about the stimulus money. A lot of people have received or they're getting that next round of $600 a person. Uh, I encourage you, uh, I'll be really bold and step out there. Uh, this is what I did. Uh, and I think it's only fair to let you know, uh, I didn't have a plan for that. It was, I, I felt it was a blessing, a gift from God, and I couldn't give it back to the government because they wouldn't take it. So uh, I gave it towards parking lot. And uh, so if you've got, um, uh, got it on your mind wondering what to do with all or part of that, um, giving to your church, giving toward the parking lot would be an excellent place for you to go. And I say that without shame, just as a reminder that when we are blessed, we need to return the blessing as well. So um, 
that's my little spiel on the parking lot today, but we are well over 38,000 in what we've collected. So uh, praise God for all those that are generously continuing to give on a weekly or a monthly basis. We'll have that balance knocked out really, really quickly. So um, one other thing that is not in your bulletin yet, I have C insert, but I didn't get it done. So next week in your bulletin, it will be in there, special insert. We need a couple, three people to step in and fill in for the blood mobile for the month of March and possibly April. Uh, Joanne is busy taking care of um, uh, taking care of uh, Norman at home, and so I told her that we would throw a line out and see who could fill in. She's given me a very explicit list of instructions on what needs to be done and how it all works. And um, it's not rocket science. Uh, it'll be a little bit of a learning curve, but I, I would ask that you would pray, and, and guys, this includes you too, um, that you could come and help. Uh, it's a rather long day. Maybe you can divide it in half with someone, but uh, I'll get the instructions in the bulletin for next week and then just pray on what God would have you do for that. So, okay. Uh, let's see. Let's go on to our praises and prayers. Um, many continuing on the list today. I think that most of you know by now about Slade Dunifan had a, a very bad uh, accident in his truck night before last, had some pretty severe injuries. They flew him from Fort Wayne to Indianapolis. They did surgery last night. The surgeons were pretty pleased with the way things went. He can move his hands and or his arms and his legs. He can talk. Um, everything from that standpoint seems normal, but time will t t will tell. Uh, with Slade's physical challenges, it's always a little more difficult to get him healed from something, but uh, he'll be spending a few days in Indianapolis, and he um, uh, will have a some kind of a back brace on as well <clears throat> to hold the, the vertebrae where they put one back into place, and so... Um, just continue to pray for the Dunifin family all the way around, as you can imagine, with COVID and not being able to be there. Both his mom and dad are with him, but um, none of the other family can be there, and it's really difficult. And so keep them in prayer as well. And Slade, as he um, is our miracle fella, just um, keeps coming back again and again. So we thank God for his protection. Uh, as well, Terry Barkey is on your prayer list in your email, he called me yesterday and he asked that I share with you that he's been admitted to uh, behavioral health at Parkview in Fort Wayne. He's really struggling emotionally and they're working on his medications. So please be in prayer that God will bring Terry peace more than anything. He's really, really struggling right now. And he was so hoping that he wouldn't have to be in the hospital in 2021 because he was in eight times in 2020, but um, God's will be done. And so he's where he needs to be right now. And he asked that I share that with you. And we also want to pray for travel mercies for John and Nancy as they head to Florida. Might be there. I didn't get the exact day yet. Um, and then uh, Nora and Ashton leave sometime this week to head down to Florida as well. So prayers for travel mercies and all others, and especially those on the roads today, the road crews, the EMS, and all of those folks that... Um, uh, are out there working the roads. We just keep them in prayer that they're safe and return home safely to their families tonight. And we also want to add to our prayer list two ladies, Kathy and Kim. They're both acquaintances of uh, Connie Gammon, both having some individual issues. And so please add them to your prayer list when you get your bulletin later today. And then also ongoing in our... Um, uh, on our bulletin is uh, says, please send cards and letters and phone calls to Beverly Babbitt, and it has her information, and then Edna Barkey. Edna has moved a month or so ago over to Chandler Place. She's adjusting, but it's not been easy. Again, with COVID, there's a lot of isolation. 
So any calls or cards, notes you can send, would, she would really appreciate. And I talk to Bev at least once a week, if not twice a week. You know, she had that terrible accident back in, I think it was about October. And she has either been in the hospital or in rehab all of that time since then. And again, with COVID being very isolated, it's just been so difficult. So please give them a call, um, give them uh, a note in the mail. Uh, if you're inclined, send a little sunshine package to them and uh, encourage them because they need that right now. <clears throat> okay. Let me see if I've missed anything here. Um, nope, not right now. I think we're okay. So <clears throat> let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, we, in the midst of a winter storm, thank you for the beautiful day. Uh, God, we thank you for the protection that you afford us as we try to use our best judgment and stay home and stay off the roads today. We pray for those that have to be out on the roads, that they are kept safe and uh, return home safely to their families. Father, we lift the many that are unnamed on our prayer list and those that we've named this morning. We especially lift this morning's slate as he recovers from surgery and the injuries of an auto accident that you would continue to be with him. Your hand of protection was all over him at the time of the accident. And so we are so grateful that you were there and that you've spared him and uh, are bringing him through to health again. We also pray for Terry Barkey as he struggles with some emotional issues. And we pray that the doctors are able to get his medications adjusted so that he can be healthy and whole once again. Father, again, you know the, where our hearts are. You know the unspoken requests on our hearts. And so we give those to you as we come to you and worship today in a different sort of way, but in a way that we can connect and know that you see us and hear us and love us. We thank you for that. Father, we pray it in your precious and your holy name. Amen. Well, the title of my message today is stop it, stop it, with an exclamation point. And the scripture comes from Luke 10, 41, 42, and we'll go to that in a few minutes. But <clears throat> I would just make note that if you're a parent or a grandparent or an auntie or an uncle, uh, anyone that's worked with or still works with children in some way, you've had to intervene with the children that you care for. And you have undoubtedly used phrases like, knock it off, take a break, don't do that, or stop it. They've all become part of your vocabulary and the vocabulary of those little people that you are charged with. Children are busy, right? sometimes hyper busy. I'm reminded on a regular basis when I see young parents with children out and they're wrestling the whole gang, you know, even if the children are being well behaved, children have a lot of energy. And I'm reminded that young people are meant to have children because at my age, I think it would kill me or take me right to the edge. Um, I often think of Abraham and Sarah. How did they do it? They must have had a lot of help in their home when they had that baby at such a late age. But children are busy and sometimes they're hyper busy. And then we adults fill up their schedules with various sporting events, dance lessons, karate. Um, in this hyper busy world, do we wonder at all why our children tend to be hyperactive? It's run here, run there, back and forth, up and down. We've got to keep a written calendar because we sure can't keep it all in our heads. Um, we seem to have taught and are teaching these children well how to live a life full of busyness and even hyperactivity, if I dare say. Well, as adults, we should know better, but we don't. And we don't seem to have learned very well at all. 
We have job demands. We go to the gym and work out so that we're healthy and look better. We have home demands. We're working on furthering our education. And who has time to sit on the porch any longer with coffee or iced tea and just chat? We have to schedule it into our busy schedules. And then before we even get to the date and time, oftentimes that gets interrupted and we don't get it done. Well, somehow I think we've got to figure all of this out. And when we get overstressed or overburdened with obligations, what do we do? What do we do? It seems like we are busy all the time, but oftentimes we're not doing what we ought to be doing. Well, leave it to Jesus to take note in several situations, and I'd like for us to look at some of those and dig into some of those and see what we can learn today. So if you have your Bible there with you, turn it with me to Luke chapter 10, verses 41 and 42. Very familiar. You know these, but we're going to talk about them maybe in a different way. Luke 10, 41 and 42. These are the words of Jesus. Jesus says, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you're worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary, has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. It's the familiar story. Two sisters, Mary and Martha. They were sisters also to Jesus' special friend Lazarus, the one that he raised from the dead. On this particular day, Jesus and his disciples were walking uh, along a road, we're told in scripture, and they did a lot of walking. And they came upon the home of Mary and Martha. They were the queens of Mideastern hospitality in the day. Martha ran out to greet Jesus and the scripture tells us to open her home to them. Getting Jesus and the crew all settled in, Martha rushed off to the kitchen to prepare food, leaving Mary to do what Mary does best, entertaining their guest with small talk and her presence. But it didn't take long before Martha came rushing back in out of the kitchen to complain to Jesus, her face all smeared with flour, sweat on her brow, complaining, complaining, she left me to do all the work. Can you hear the drama in that? Don't you care, Jesus, about me? Tell her to come and give me a hand. And that's where we come to today's scripture. When Jesus says, Martha, Martha, essentially, Jesus was saying to Martha, stop it, stop it. You see, Martha was missing the part or the point, and so do we sometimes. In our search for excellence in this life, we often miss Jesus. We've got to slow down, my friends, and set our priorities so we stop missing him. Remember the story in Matthew 18, 8, 18, where the crowds were crammed around Jesus, hanging on his every word. He was worn out, weary to the bone from all of his preaching, all of his teaching, and all of the demands of ministry. But he took a moment to listen to his heavenly father, who essentially said, Jesus, stop it. Stop it. And Jesus advised the disciples to take him across the lake for some downtime. Even Jesus needed some R&R. &R. 
You see, friends, one thing that I've learned in life, and I bet you have too, is that we tend to do things out of habit versus out of love or need. It's like the story I've shared with you before, but it's always worth sharing again about the lady who was fixing a ham for her family and her husband standing by watching, and she chops off the end of the ham. And he watches her carefully and she finishes preparing it and gets it ready to go in the oven. And he said, why did you cut off the end of the ham? And she said, well, that's the way mom always did it. Mystified, he next time he was with his mother-in-law, he said, mom, your daughter cuts off the end of the ham to go in the oven to cook. Why, why does she do that? She said she does it because you did it. Why, why do you do that? And she said, well, because grandma did it. My mom did it. So, next family gathering, the guy goes to Grandma and says, Grandma, why do you all cut off the end of the ham before you put it in the pan to go in the oven? And she looked at him with a half smile and she said, because it didn't fit. It made no sense, but it was a tradition carried down from generation to generation. So it kind of tells us that perhaps we need to develop a stop doing list. Some things that we do out of habit, out of tradition, um, just because they are, and develop a stop doing list. Take an inventory of our activities and ask ourselves what is really needed. You may find out that some of the things that you're doing have served their purpose or for fulfilled a season. And when that happens, these things or, or these kind of traditions can become obstacles. Well, we've always done it that way. Well, we've always done it on that day. Well, we've always done it at that place. But if it's a tradition that's become an obstacle, then maybe you need to look a little deeper and decide if it's the best thing to do for everyone to carry on the tradition or are people just going through the motions. It takes courage to take the road less traveled. Anybody ever read that book by Norman Vincent Peale, The Road Less Traveled? Good book. And it takes courage to take the road less traveled, but there are also less obstacles and the scenery is incredible when you do something different that maybe you've never done before or haven't done for a long, long time. Make the things that are important a priority on your calendar. Then slowly, slowly wean yourself from the, but I have to list. That time that you spend driving little Johnny or little Susie to, to and from piano lessons, the hour you spend waiting on them, all the while they kick and scream and whine about going, cost you $20, $30 for that hour lesson that they hate. And then you argue and maybe even yell during the week over practicing or the lack thereof. Ask yourself, is this a good use of your time, your talent, and your treasure? Only you can answer that. What's your goal in all of it? Chances are, if the kid is that resistant, they aren't going to be a piano virtuoso anyway. And speaking of tradition, Remember that woman accused of adultery about to be stoned to death? Jesus comes upon this scene. The tradition of stoning the woman, the man had no penalty, but the woman was stoned to death. And Jesus, after quietly observing, taking some time for contemplation, says, any of you who have never sinned, go ahead and throw out the first stone. And again, he was having dinner at a Pharisee's home and a sinful woman, the Bible tells us, quote unquote, we don't know what she did or why she was sinful, but a sinful woman from the town came with perfume and wiped Jesus' feet with it. Mocked by others in attendance, including the host, 
But in both cases, Jesus put a halt to it. Stop it, he said. Not in so many words, but he essentially said, stop it. What are you doing and or saying that might be tradition, but it's the wrong thing to do? Traditions can be broken if it's for the good of God. After those two scenarios, Jesus told each of the women, stop it, stop the sins that you've been committing and don't do it anymore. The Donna version, not the Bible version. But it's what he said, stop it and don't do it anymore. He told the people that were condemning the woman putting perfume on his feet and the people that were about to stone the adulterous woman, stop it, don't do that. Unless you've never sinned, don't partake in it. Don't be a part of it. Then there was the time that Jesus was speaking to throngs of people and the crowds grew and grew and grew all day. So Jesus told his disciples to go to town and bring back food and they started to whine. We don't have enough money to get that much food. It's too far to walk. How are we going to carry it all? And on and on and on. You would have thought they would have learned by now. And you know what Jesus said? You do know what Jesus said. Stop it. Stop your whining. Stop your complaining. We're at the feet of the Heavenly Father and he always provides. And that's when the miracle of the loaves and the fishes took place. And if you remember when it was over, they gathered up the leftovers and they had more than what they had even started with. Friends, we need to let go of some things that we are emotionally attached to and leave some margin for meaningful relationships and activities. Are you leaving time to nurture your faith and the faith of your family? We think the world will collapse if we stop doing those big traditional holiday family meals. But if they're not fun anymore, then stop. We think the world will stop spinning if we stop volunteering for an agency where we are doing it out of a point of obligation instead of love. But you know what? Just stop. Listen, if there's any one thing that I have learned is that worry will work itself out of a job when we take care of our bodies, feed our minds, heal our emotions, and rest our souls. Did you hear that? I'm going to give it to you again. Worry will work itself out of a job when we take care of our bodies, when we feed our minds, heal our emotions, and rest, rest, rest our souls. So go ahead. You have my permission. More importantly, you have God's permission to stop the busyness of your life and be a Mary in a Martha world. There are so few opportunities to connect. Use those. Don't miss it. Don't miss Jesus. You might just be surprised what God can do when you give him the time to do it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, give us the faith to let go of the good so that we can enjoy your best. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Friends, stay safe. Stay in unless you absolutely can't do it today. And I look forward to hopefully Tuesday night Bible study at the church, but we'll do it online as well like we have been. And um, next Sunday together for Holy Communion. God bless you all. You are loved and treasured. And if you're doing something that doesn't leave room for Jesus, then stop it. Have a great week. God bless you. Bye-bye.